Welcome to another version of 2020 Vision. If I were to put a title to this month's 2020 Vision, it would be, what do you do the last two hours of the day? The orthopedic industry utilizes two different types of people uh, for sales. One is a coverage rep and the other one's a sales rep. They kind of share some of the day, but at times you have a, a, a coverage rep that's trying to break out of their shell and become a sales rep, but then you also have some sales reps that kind of get into their shell and become high paid coverage reps. I wanted to talk to the sales team personally about two major traps you could get into. Trap number one, a friendly environment. Most of the time you're covering cases, uh, maybe every day, at least several times a week, and you're walking into the same hospital and you're working with the same doctor and you're with the same staff and everyone likes you, everyone knows you, everyone knows your product, and you could get kind of lulled to sleep in that comfort zone to where you either don't want to or think that that's your job, that that's your sales day. Well, it's not your sales day, you're a salesman and salesmen sell. The second trap that people get into is going home early. It takes about a week for somebody to go home at the end of their sales day or a case coverage day. And um, you get home 2.30, 3 o'clock. You do that another day. You do that the third day. You do that for a week straight. Um, by human nature, that becomes your day. If you have to work until 5.30 or 6 o'clock, you actually consider it kind of overtime or you had a lot of cases that day. Those are prime hours to be selling. The lazy rep will tend to um, maybe go see a couple other people, uh, stop in somewhere wearing scrubs um, and uh, kind of just uh, lazily uh, make a sales call. Well, that's not how uh, professional salesmen do that. It is my strong opinion that those last few hours of the day is the key indicator that differentiates you between a sales rep or a highly overpaid coverage rep. Do you go home and study? Do you go to the gym? Do you uh, start running errands for your uh, better half? Or do you make the sale? It's very important to know this. Everyone knows you're a salesman. Your surgeons know you're a salesman. You should know you're a salesman. People aren't going to be shocked that you are selling, even if they're your friend or a doctor you've known forever, or even if you're coming from the case coverage side and you're stepping into that world of sales rep, they know that you're going to be a sales rep. Explain to them that you're now a sales rep and that you want to use them, uh, the friendlier the surgeon, the better, to cut your teeth in selling, but you've got to do it. You can't hope that corporate comes in or a contract happens or someone's gonna do some sort of uh, post-market. Actually, the professional sales reps sell. For those who often tell me, I'm a no pressure sales rep. I don't like to pressure doctors. I don't like to have to sell anything. That just means that you're a highly overpaid coverage rep. Selling is the thing you do. It's who you are. What should you do? Now insert the science of selling trauma. Make a plan on who you're gonna sell first, get their call schedule, so on and so forth. It is imperative that you pick those doctors that you, you work a, a long day, you had an early morning, you have an early morning tomorrow and the day after and the day after, but the science of selling trauma happens those last few hours of the day. Like I said in the last video, I promise this works. It's like a retirement plan. If you're just depending on the doctors that you're selling today and you're going home and you got way too many muscles to be a sales rep, you're not investing in your future. You have to continually sell new doctors, new business, new accounts. I hope I wasn't too brutal. I hope uh, you took it as honest and good luck in selling those last few hours of the day.